Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about something that is going down in the books. The North remembers the Grand Northern Conspiracy. So because tonight on the live stream at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Direwolf City, we will be talking about Rickon. That's who you guys voted for last week. So we're going to be talking about Rickon and unicorns. So today I wanted to talk about the Grand Northern Conspiracy. So the Grand Northern Northern Conspiracy is a very popular book theory among book readers and it's some northern political powerhouse shit and it makes Rick on Stark a lot more important than some like Ramsey Bolton arrow fodder. So the theory is almost as popular as R plus L equals J and I will link some articles below um, like whoever originated this theory. So the political northern storyline never really gets touched on in the show. It's like politics don't even exist outside of King's Landing and Marine on Game of Thrones. But actually in the books, there seems to be like this whole secret plot to put a Stark back in Winterfell. So the North has always been ruled by House Stark. House Stark was kings in the North before Torn Stark bent the knee to Aegon the Conqueror, giving up his crown, but remaining Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. The North is made up of several different houses. House Stark, House Bolton, House Karstark, House Glover, House Hornwood, House Reed, House Umber, House Manderley, House Mormont, House Dustin. I mean, just to name a few, because there's a lot more. All these Northern houses are vassals or bannermen of House Stark. So when House Stark goes to war or calls their banners, these houses send their men to answer the call. So for example, when Rob calls his banners, Lord Karstark comes to Winterfell with three of his sons and an army of 300 men on horse and 2,000 men on foot. So all these northern houses send people some more than others. But either way, when Roose Bolton joined with Walder Frey and the Lannisters to help orchestrate the Red Wedding, he didn't only betray Robb Stark. He betrayed the North. And the North remembers. It wasn't only Starks that were killed at the Red Wedding. Every house that sent men south with the young wolf lost men. And the North remembers. So before Robb dies, he wins a lot of battles. He's named King in the North. But those pesky, Boltons, ambitious, vicious sons of a bitches just could not let Rob be great like they just couldn't. And the Boltons have a history of just being rebellious when it comes to the Starks. The enmity between the Starks and the Boltons went back to the Long Night itself. It is claimed. The wars between these two families were legion and not all ended in victory for House Stark. King Royce Bolton, second of his name, is said to have taken and burned Winterfell itself. His namesake and descendant, Royce VI, remembered by history as Royce Red Arm for his habit of plunging his arm into the bellies of captive foes to pull out their entrails with his bare hand, did the same centuries later. Other Red Kings were reputed to wear the skins of Stark princes they had captured and flayed. Yet in the end, even the Dreadfort fell before the might of Winterfell. So the Boltons were always rebellious towards the Starks. Like they just, it's just in their fucking DNA at this point. But anyway, so Rob Stark is made king in the north and the north is finally free and independent, like a free and independent kingdom, or at least free from the Iron Throne. So the north remembers is first uttered in a storm of swords by Rob Stark to his uncles. And it's a huge Easter egg. It's huge foreshadowing. So Rob Stark, the Blackfish and Edmure, they're all discussing what to do about Lord Karstark. Rob says he betrayed him, defied him, and now he must die, which will make his son their enemy. Lord Karstark's son is Harrion, and he is a captive at Harrenhal, and Rob assures that if they kill Lord Karstark, that's going to make Harrion their enemy. What else would he be? I'm about to kill his father. He's not like to thank me. He might. There are sons who hate their fathers, and in a stroke you will make him lord of the carhold. Rob Stark shook his head. Even if Harion were that sort, he could never openly forgive his father's killer. His own men would turn on him. These are Northmen, uncle. The North remembers. And that's the first time that it's ever spoken in the books. So put a pin in that because we're going to circle back to that. So in the North, things like guess right are held sacred. They're held sacred in the North, as sacred as a heart tree. So once you have taken bread and salt, you are protected by guess right and the laws of hospitality. 
Do you recall Old Nan's story, the legend of the rat cook at the night fort? You know, the dude that cooked the Andal King's son in a pie and then fed it to him and then he was turned into a rat that just ate his children and all that shit. Well, it's funny because Bran tells that story while he's at the night fort right after the Red Wedding. Definitely foreshadowing and we already kind of see it pay off with Wyman Manderley and we're going to talk about it. So the Red Wedding is the main factor in the Grand Northern Conspiracy because not only did the phrase break guests right, they didn't just kill the Starks, they killed many, 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 many Northerners. So maybe you're saying that maybe their beef should be with the phrase and not the Boltons. But the Boltons are in bed with the phrase and the Boltons helped orchestrate the Red Wedding. And Wyman Manderley knows that it was Roose Bolton's bastard, Ramsay Bolton, Ramsay Snow, that took Winterfell and burned it and killed the people there, not Theon. But that's not the only reason the North hates the Boltons, and specifically Ramsay Bolton. So let's start with Lady Danella Hornwood. Lady Danella is Wyman Manderley's cousin. She's an older lady. Her son was killed by Jamie Lannister at the Whispering Woods, and her husband was killed on the Battle of the Green Fork. Lots of men want to marry Danella for her lands and her castles. Also, she's not a bad looking woman. So Lady Danella goes to the Harvest Feast at Winterfell, only taking with her six men at arms. She's going to like meet a lot of suitors there, um, but she doesn't want any of them. So on her way home, she is seized by Ramsay Snow and he forces her to marry him that night and then he locks her in a tower. This causes Lord Manderley to seize her castle and holdings to keep it safe from the Boltons, but Ramsay locks her in the tower and doesn't feed her. She's found dead, starved to death, and she's even ate her fingers off. Davos overhears Lord Manderley say this, He won't ever be my lord. He made Lady Hornwood marry him, then shut her in a dungeon and made her eat her fingers. So yeah, the Northerners hate Ramsay Snow and House Bolton. Roos is cold and ambitious, but Roos isn't a fucking psychopath, maniac, crazy person that is just awful in all areas of ways that a person can be awful. So you start to see something is going down pretty early on, especially when it comes to Wyman Manderley and his interactions with Davos. Keep in mind, Wyman Manderley's son was killed at the Red Wedding. But to go forward, we must go back. So Roose Bolton plans to hold Winterfell, it, like his whole plan is to marry his son Ramsay to Arya Stark. But what they don't know, or maybe they do, is that the girl is not Arya Stark, it is Jean Poole, Sansa's bestie, that was taken in King's Landing during the Winterfell wipeout. Either way, this fake Arya Stark marries Ramsay Bolton. Theon gives fake Arya away to Ramsay Bolton in the Winterfell Godswood. Um, Arya's... Fake Arya is crying all the time. She's always sad and whimpering. Like, people want to, like, avenge Ned and, like, save his daughter at this point. Like, they hate fucking Ramsay. So, Wyman Manderley is there. He requests the singer, who is Mance Raider, named Abel, to play The Night That Ended and about Danny Flint, which are Night Fort songs. And then he serves three big, huge pies himself. While leaving the hall, Wyman Manderley tells Abel to sing The Rat Cook another night fort tale and it just so happens that there were three pies and three fray men that were with Wyman Manderley have disappeared. So it seems Wyman Manderley has baked them in pies and served them at Ramsay's wedding. Wyman Manderley is fucking savage. He's one of my favorite characters in all of A Song of Ice and Fire. So the Grand Northern Conspiracy is that all of these people are working together to overthrow the Boltons and put a Stark back in Winterfell. So where does Rickon factor into all of this? So when Davos visits Lord Manderley to try to win his support for Stannis, Lord Manderley tasks Davos with bringing Rickon Stark back from Skagos. If Davos brings Rickon to Lord Manderley, House Manderley will side with Stannis. The Manderleys and all the other participating houses want a Stark back in Winterfell. Okay, so who are the participating houses? Because doesn't some of the houses like actually hate the Starks? Like Barbara Dustin. Barbara Dustin hates the Starks. What about the Car Starks? 
So how do we know that they're all working together and why would they want to help House Stark? So snowstorms are storming, Stannis is marching towards Winterfell and all the northern lords and ladies are held up in Winterfell and the cracks in the Bolton and Frey northern alliance are really showing. Well, here they are. Let's start with Barbara Dustin. Bro, Barbara Dustin is so pressed over Brandon Stark's dick like, babe, he's been dead for 16 years now, let it go. But anyways, Barbara Dustin basically tells the phrase, the North remembers, like the North remembers what you did. And the phrase are like, you know, what you better remember is that the Rob Stark betrayed us. So Barbara Dustin is likely working with um, Lord Manderley and then likely uh, the Hornwoods, um, the Hornwood men, definitely. House Umber is split in two and one faction is definitely working with Lord Manderley and Barbara Dustin and all the Northerners. The Mountain Clans are all for like killing Ramsay and saving Ned's daughter. Like they'd rather like save Ned's daughter than fight Stannis at this point. So like Rob had said in the beginning, in the Storm of Swords at the beginning of this video, Rob Stark said, even if Harrion were that sort, he could never openly forgive his father's killer. His own men would turn on him. These are Northmen, uncle. The North remembers. So, basically, the North remembers and R Ramsay Bolton, Bruce Bolton, they're not going to get away with it. Their own men are going to turn on them, like Rob said. And we also know that Alice Carstark is in the north at the wall with John. So she's likely going to bring House Karstark in the fold. We know House Mormont is like, we know no king, but the king in the north whose name is Stark. Um, so yeah, they're going to be brought into the fold. Like, it, it, it's... Roos and Ramsay are going to be outed by the northerners. Like, straight up. Grand Northern Conspiracy. So, and the major part of the Grand Northern Conspiracy is that once they overthrow the Boltons, they want to put Rick on at the front of the Stark family. They want to put Rick on as King in the North or Lord of the North or whatever, how, Lord of Winterfell, however they're going to do it. But Rick on's not there. And there's also a letter that Rob wrote, which is kind of I think Rob named Jon Snow like it's not confirmed Rob said he was naming Jon Snow his heir but like there's also that letter floating around so that is the Grand Northern Conspiracy and that is Rickon's bigger part to play and George has also said that Rickon has a bigger part to play so what do you think about the Grand Northern Conspiracy and we will be talking about all of this Rickon juice unicorns shaggy dog Skagos, Davos, all of it. Wyman Manderley, Grand Northern Conspiracy. We will be going in depth with it tonight of what you can expect from Rickon in the Winds of Winter. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.